As Nebraska celebrates 150 years as a state, some of its most significant contributions can be found in the colors and sketches of its artists and the lasting words of its authors. We've got a few selections of that ink and fire here tonight. Each year, the Jocelyn Castle celebrates the best in art and literature with a week-long festival. In connection with the state's sesquicentennial, the focus this time is on some of Nebraska's most noteworthy cultural exports. I think what's surprising is just how varied this is. What I love about them is they're also accessible for people um, and really are just fun and, and unique and sort of embody the spirit of Nebraska. There were many artists to consider, but one they chose is Grant Tyson Reynard. An artist who grew up in Grand Island, Reynard was a musician and a well-known illustrator in the early 1900s. When his exhibit came and was unpacked here, I instantly recognized some of the work. I'd seen it, but I hadn't ever really put the name with that piece, you know, and hadn't made the connection that, oh, this is a Nebraska artist that did this. Some of Reynard's most famous works depict everyday experiences. They're real people. Uh, the lady looking at the artwork over there, at the modern art, uh, I've, I go to a lot of museums. I, people do really do that. They're stupefied by it sometimes and think, what can that mean? But if you stand there long enough, it, something happens and, and you say to yourself, that really is uh, a slice of life that you're seeing there. Reynard also had a connection to one of Nebraska's most notable cultural exports, author Willa Cather. The two, who grew up not far from each other, met in New Hampshire in 1928. She gave him a piece of advice that he describes as a significant turning point in his career. She said that her greatest success had been when she returned to things that she was familiar with and her youth in growing up in Nebraska. And that was something that he sort of took to heart and really describes that as being a point where he changed the focus of his work. Cather's imprint can be found on many Nebraskans. Her work brought the stark plains of Nebraska to a wide audience. Well, Cather is widely recognized as one of the most notable or the most notable Nebraska author. In total, she produced 12 novels. Uh, she was the first uh, notable author to put Nebraska and the Great Plains on the map. Cather was really one of the pioneers of her time for a woman to be uh, an editor of a newspaper or a, a novelist, let alone a Pulitzer Prize winning novelist. That was a, a really amazing accomplishment for uh, a woman in, in her day. The Jocelyn also hosted a performance of Cather's works, a collection titled The Scribe of Webster County. I reckon he means by that is that Harv ain't asked him to mortgage any more farms lately so as he could go on with his education. <laughs> Seems like my mind don't reach back to a time when Harv wasn't being educated. The actors performed selections and moved from room to room throughout the castle. The land did it. It had its little joke. It pretended to be poor because nobody knew how to work it right. The performances included excerpts from Cather's works, her novel, O Pioneers, her short stories, and public addresses. With these smaller, intimate rooms, the sense of storytelling and kind of around the fireplace are really heightened. And also it puts you in the space. As an actor and as a playwright, I found her dialogue uh, really vibrant and alive and uh, just individual to the characters and very current. But William never heeded ominous forecast in the domestic horizon. After watching this tonight, I saw her insights into people and her ability to look at how attachment to the land influence people's lives and decisions. I love female writers, but I love writers that take um, what they know and the environments that they come from and sending them out to the national scene, which is what she did. She won a Pulitzer, and it's impressive and inspiring, and I can't wait to learn more about her. And that was the goal of the festival, inspiring Nebraskans to learn more about all of these authors and artists.